Amen, clap. Amen. Praise the Lord. As the house lights come up, just turn to your neighbor and say, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night. <clears throat> Amen. Praise the Lord. How many ate supper before they came? Oh. Of course, Don would raise his hand. I didn't expect any different. <clears throat> Ain't a, all right. Then, uh, the ones that didn't eat, who's buying supper? Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so I'm going to be quick. Uh, this, is, this is my whole sermon right here in a nutshell on a sticky note. You know, sometimes uh, we've been preaching about love. How many enjoyed uh, Easter Sunday? How many enjoyed the, the, the new sermon series we begin, Love Reigns? How many knows it's time to let love reign in our, in our hearts and in our lives? And, you know, I was talking with somebody last night, and we were talking about something, and, and, and she just said, just keep preaching on love. Just keep preaching on love. Uh, uh, Brother James Tipton he, he told me one time, he said, Chad, whatever you want your church to be, preach it. And I started thinking, we well, shouldn't we be a church full of love? And if that's what we want, we should just keep preaching love and love and love. And, and you know, sometimes it takes a little longer in Louisiana because us Cajuns are a little bit hard-headed. See, see, Sunday morning they laugh when I make a joke about me, about my nose, or about us talking too much. But when, when, when I say us, you know, y'all don't laugh as funny. So, so what I'm going to start doing is when I make a joke about y'all, I'm going to start laughing and see if y'all get offended. But, you know, so that's the reason uh, we've been just preaching about love. We've been preaching about love. I started the year off preaching about the kingdom. When we're going to get to the place where we just believe God takes care of us, you know, Matthew, it says, consider the lilies. They're, they don't toil, means work. They don't spin. They don't make clothes. But our heavenly father clothes them with leaves, with flowers, and he starts talking about the sparrow. He says they, they, don't, they don't walk, they don't plant gardens, but he still feeds them. And then he said, if God, Jesus said, if our Heavenly Father does all that for them, how much more than he cares about us? So at some point, you know, we need to realize about we just need to trust God. I'm going to just believe trust in God. Even on our worst days, you know, there's never a good time to go on vacation if you, if you, work for yourself or you do that kind of work where it's never a good time because every time you plan a vacation all of a sudden you're going to get busy something's going to happen and we were going about a week and a half on, on on the mission trip it was wednesday till and man i've been getting calls and and everything going at some point i'm just getting all worked up you know because my nerves be bad and and you know so i'm getting all worked up you know I'm, i can't seem to finish i'm starting a bunch of new stuff can't seem to finish and at some point i said i just need to take a deep breath and you know what? And just just try to be faithful and let God do the rest, because sometimes we need to realize that God's in control. I got a couple of amens. We we sometimes we think we in control. <clears throat> sometimes I think I'm in control, and we forget that God's in control. I, I was telling Charlie the other night. I said, and and, and the people at, at prayer Monday night. I said, just when the devil tries to set you up for a trap, what he don't know is God's setting you up for a victory. Come on. You know, God is setting you up. God sets us up sometimes because he says all things work together for the good. So the devil's so dumb that he is gonna, he's going to keep trying bad. And every time the devil tried to do something against me, if, 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 I, if I kept my eyes on the Lord or what it says in, in the book of uh, 1 Samuel that David behaved himself, no matter what Saul did to him, David acted right. David behaved himself. And if I can, when the devil comes against me, if I just, I, just, I just behave myself and I just trust God, I see God take that circumstance and turn it for the good. Uh, you know, we, I want to start, you know, having some testimonies. On our website, we have once a month, once every six months or so, three months. Sometimes it changes, it varies. Uh, we put a new testimony on that, on that launch page. Uh, uh, Praise Church Abbeville. Dot com. If you don't go there, you need to go there. Uh, pretty soon, while I'm talking about it, uh, pretty soon our live stream, will, our, our service will be fed to our website also. You're not going to have to get on Facebook. You're not going to have to worry about Facebook. You'll be able to go straight to our website, and you can watch the services live. It's coming. Uh, we we changing some uh, the, the way we stream because it's it's very... If you try to watch our live stream, it's it's garbage pretty much because we're having problems with internet. Cox came out again. It completely crashed. Every major service we have, Christmas, 
Easter, any, it, it goes down. Uh, so, so we're firming up some stuff, some resilience to where, uh, you know, we'll be able to have two li lines of internet come in, and it's going to be higher quality, and actually the buffering will stop. Uh, it's there's only you know that's it's it's the same platform that most major churches that have a solid live stream does so we we're getting into that because uh, we're going somewhere and that's I think that's very important so uh, in the next few weeks you'll you'll see us live stream from a phone till then because we're making some changes so uh, hopefully that'll be there <clears throat> I want to read a st I, I've been reading how many is going through the don't raise your hands because I don't want to single anybody out but I started reading the Bible through this year. Because I realized I studied a lot, but did I read everything? And I, I noticed the more I read, the more I want to read. And what they tell me to read in a day is like, okay, it's just getting good. <clears throat> man, he's just a fiction to get his head cut off. I want to see if this man's going to make it out alive or not. <clears throat> and, you know, sometimes I've been, I've been reading, and I came across something two days ago that you know it said read three chapters and I think that that morning because I get up about three in the morning 3 30 most mornings and and I try I try to read till about seven I, my time with the Lord from three to four depends when I get up to about seven uh well me it, it used to be me the Lord and Moses but now it's we got the new dog the new puppy so now it's me Moses and Judah and the Lord and it's not he's not that bad he's he, he's small but he sleeps at my feet so now I got a foot warmer. So I'm like, I can get used to this. And so I begin to read, and I read something, and I wanted to put up 1 Samuel chapter 30. And I'm only going to read two verses of Scripture. Uh, two verses of Scripture, if you can black out that background, please. Yeah, just, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Uh, two verses of Scripture. Let me set it up. David was living with the Philistines for a while. How many knows he's, he lived with the enemy? Think about the future king of Israel. This is a whole other message, but I just want to put it. The future king of Israel, the, the, the praise leader, the one that Jesus talked about more than anybody, lived with the Philistines, the very people that was trying to kill Saul. But Saul was trying to kill him. God used his enemy. I wonder if that's when he wrote the 23rd Psalms. You, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He says, I'm, ju I'm just see living with the Philistines, just eating with the Philistines, just chilling with the Philistines, just singing with the Philistines. That's all I can think about. And, you know, you know, just living there. And they went to battle against Saul, and David was going to go with them. And then, but the other, peop the other Philistine tribe says, hey, we don't trust this dude. So they sent him back home. And he was encamped, his, their families was encamped in a place called Ziglag. If you've been in church, you're going to preach some messages about Ziglag, 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 you know, and what happened there. And basically what happened is they went back, their, their wives were stolen, their, their horses were stolen, their kids were stolen. And when they got back, they were hurt, they were upset, they began to cry, they began to weep. Uh, David lost his both wives and his children. And he went and he prayed to God. He got hacks for the ephod, uh, the, 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 the priestly garment. And he says, God, can I know that I can go take our women and children back. Can I go? He asked God, could he go? How many times in our life do we ask God to do something? <clears throat> in my life, when I got myself in a mess, that's because Chad, Chad decided this is what Chad's going to do. Chad knew it was wrong. Chad knew it was a mistake. But Chad wanted to do what Chad wanted to do. <clears throat> Uh, and that's how we are. Uh, sometimes we're big kids. Uh, my grandson Ezra, he's two. He decided that they have these uh, bearded dragons, these big old lizard thingies. And he wanted to touch the heat lamp. His mama said, no, don't touch, don't touch. But he was determined. All of a sudden, he looked at her and he touched it. Ah! <laughs> ha I told you not to do it. Isn't that like God? God says, Chad, don't touch it. But I just, I just want to touch it. Why do we get like that? I don't know. But that is, so when David, God said, go, he told them in, let's go get, let's go get our families back. Re read this with me. So David went, that, that's in context. So here we go. So David went, he and 600 men that were with him. There were 600. And the men that met him at Ziglag, they were discontented with life. They were in debt. They had a bunch of problems, so they attached themselves to something bigger than themselves. 
Sometimes when we are discontented and we're not satisfied with life, we need to plug in to something, a cause or, 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 or something that is bigger than ourselves. And that's where the local church comes in because guess what? we're plugging in. We're working for something bigger. We're working for the kingdom. We're working for God. Uh, church shouldn't be just coming and being entertained, but we are getting uh, encouraged to go out and do something. Can I get an amen on that? So 600 men that were with him and, and, and with him, and they came to the book of Besor, where those that were left behind stayed. Next verse, please. But David pursued he and 400 men for 200 abode behind, uh, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook of Besor. Now listen to this. You had 600 men. 200 of them were so faint. Why? Because they were so upset. They were so distraught. They were so depressed. They had lost everything that they worked for. So they said, we're going to stay here at the brook of Besor. Anybody, if you're tracking with me, <clears throat> you're tracking with me. All right. Who's buying us lunch? Supper. <laughs> she says, Kathy fed us lunch. She did. 400 men went with David to get their women, the men, women, wives stuff back. What made 200 people stay at Besor? What would make, if, if they, you stole my stuff and I had a chance to go take it back and probably do some trash talking? Now, you see, y'all don't believe I like to trash talk, but when we play basketball, I'm a pretty bad basketball player. But let me tell you, I'm a good trash talker. I'm going to be in your face. I'm going to be hollering. I'm going to be whistling. I'm going to be talking about your mama and your grandmama and your grandmama's mama's mama and George Washington's mama. But I'm going to get you so confused, you're not going to be able to aim. And I have a good chance at winning because I'm getting in here. What happened is they, had, they all were men of valor, but because the devil got in their mind, they said, we're going to stay here at Besor. And the rest is, and 400 said, hey, we're going to go. Chad, what are you trying to say? Isn't that just like us? They're, they're going to stay at the brook of Besor. Something happens. There's an offense that comes. And I'm not going to choose to move over and go take back what's rightfully mine. But I'm just going to sit here at Besor and be sore. Now you got it? She said, guess what? They, I'm just going to be here and be sore because what the devil did to me. But no, but so, so. There is 200, one-third of the men was saying, I'm too sore. I want to be sore and be sore. I mean, <laughs> Peter Piper picked the pickle, pickle peppers. I want to be sore and be sore. They came and stole my stuff. They did me wrong. And instead of saying, you know what? Let's go back and take it. There's too many churches that, 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 that the, the gangs are coming in our towns and, and, and the devil's trying to come in my marriage. And I'm just too, I'm too sore to do anything about it. I'm just going to live here at the Brook of Beast store. Woe is me, the Bible talks about. I'm just no good. I can't sing enough. I, I'm not good enough. I'm saying I don't want to live at the Brook of Beast store. I'm going to take back what the devil came. <clears throat> you might have lived your whole life at the Brook of Beast store. Now, in the King James, and, and this is the King James, but this is the digital version. In, in the, my Bible, it has a hyphen. That's why when I, I, I was trying to pronounce it, be so I'm like, they were being sore at be sore. <clears throat> but isn't it just like me? I'm going to sit here and have a pity party. Instead of saying, okay, God, how are you going to take this tragedy? Look, what they didn't realize is that this happened at Ziglag, that 4,000 years later, give or so, we're still talking about this day. There was 2,000 years from David to Jesus. It's been almost 2,000 years from Jesus to us. So 4,000 years later, we're still talking about 200 men that was sore and didn't want to go out and fight. They didn't re realize what was going on. Man, I'm telling you, there's 400 men that said, we're going to take it back. So they went and with the battle with, with only two-thirds of the army that they should have had. Then you read on, and it says that they took it all back. And the spoils. So guess what? The men that went out, they went out 
and they got only their women and their wives back, guess what? They got more cows and they got more servants. God blessed them more after stuff was stolen because there was a restoration. Have restoration on. What's that other word you said the other day? Restitution. Because God, he did not only restore, but guess what? He, he says, I'm going to give you some restitution. Guess what? Guess what? I'm going to pay you some interest. We kept your women and wives for a little while. But guess what? Once you took them back, more came along. Then the 400 that fought, David said, we're going to give the Besor crowd their share. They said, that ain't fair. I don't think they should be blessed. But he says, no, it's the right thing to do. So the Bible says that David blessed the ones that didn't even fight. I'm trying to tell you, I don't know how long you've been sore. I don't know how long you've been offended. I don't know how long the devil has kept you because of, uh, of depression or anxiety or a problem. But all I'm telling you, I'm like, don't live at the book of Besor. Don't worry about it. Let's get up and let's begin to go out and let's begin to do God's work. Let's begin to go out and take back what the devil has stole from us. Let's be, I don't want to be sore at Besor. It sometimes it takes moving. But I'm telling you, when the devil's fighting, there's a victory on the horizon. <clears throat> when troubles come to you, there's, there was two sets of people. There was the paralyzed or the propelled. Guess what? The ones that the, the, the say they had the same, the same, they was all stolen from. The same thing happened to everybody. The same circumstance. They were all offended and done wrong equally. 200 chose to be paralyzed by it. And 400 said, this is going to propel me to fight even harder. What are we going to do? So I want to ask you, where are you living at tonight? Are, 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 you, are you still holding bitterness? <clears throat> Sunday morning is going to be kind of an extension of this message because we're on the love reigns. And Sunday morning is love reigns over your past. See, sometimes the past still grips us every day. Why do we let the past define our future? I want to say that again. Why do I let my past define the future? I'm just going to be sore. Man, I, 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 th I think over my life, and I remember there's many times where I packed a bag, and I packed toiletries, and I packed extra socks. You know, socks are good for a couple days. You can turn them inside out, and they're just as fresh as they were. The <clears throat> Same thing with undergarments. Hey, we travel. Guess what? I know, I know on this trip that we had four guys. I'm not the only one turning underwear inside out. I don't, that, that's not really true. I think I did it once. And <laughs> I remember packing the bags, and I remember walking and setting a tent and taking the, the, the spikes and making a bed by the brook of be sore because I just wanted to be sore because I was mad. Guess what? I, guess what? They done me wrong. They talked about me, and I want to live here. And I remember staying there, and, and it, it took me to a place when I just, I'm, I'm already discontented. That's why they came to David. So guess what? I can't catch a break. Every time I turn around, something's stealing my money. Every time I turn around, somebody at, at my job is coming against me. Every time I turn around, the preacher's preaching at me. Every time I turn around, my wife and husband is fussing at me. I just can't. Every time I turn around, the scale's going up. Every time I turn around, Walmart is out of what I need. So I want to be so, I want to live here. How many people, if, if, two, if one third of David's army said, I'm going to live at Besor, what if one third of the church decided to live at Besor? I want to encourage you today that God is on our side. And there is nothing that we are going through that he cannot, we cannot overcome with his help. Now, I'm wondering what, what it don't say. Did David tell them, all the men, God said, let's go. 
God said, let's go. God said, we can. God says, we can do this together. God says, guess what? What's coming's better. Hallelujah. And I just want to encourage you tonight that paralyzed means to stay. Propelled means to move. And every time a trial comes in our lives, it can either paralyze us or it can move us. Sometimes it can do both. Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was physically under distress. Drops of blood, hypodetriosis, I can, I'm, I'm saying it wrong, but there's a, there's a medical term for it. If you know it, shout it out. <clears throat> what? <laughs> but the, the, a hypo, a hypo something, through, anyway, Arlen says it all the time. <clears throat> Ar, Arlen says it all the time. It's where blood actually comes out your pores. It's a sign of uh, uh, heavy distress. He couldn't move. He was on his knees. Let this cup pass from me. It was paralyzing him. He was right there at the brook of Besor. I can't move. God, I, I, just let it pass. Just let somebody else go. And then the Bible says he come to his nevertheless moment. I love to call it that. To where he says, nevertheless. Not my will. I want to live here in this place. But I will do what you want me to do. And the Bible says, when he says, not my will, but thine. The Bible says, angels came and ministered unto him. And we talk about Resurrection Sunday. You talk about... Uh, dying on the cross, when he went there, it seemed like the biggest defeat. The devil thought, I'm, I'm bringing the beginning around again. The devil thought that I set him up. But what he didn't realize, that God had set him up for the biggest springboard. You know, anybody knows basketball? You know, I'm not too good at basketball except for the talking part. I got that down, like I told you. But but there's always going to be a setup. When somebody, you're, you're moving around, you're trying to find that hole. And, and, and then and that one guy comes, and they, they think you're going to throw it, and you throw it, and you set him up, and he dunks it. It's called a setup. They didn't see that. The enemy didn't see that one coming. So what I'm telling you, when, when God sprung them, the devil thought that he stole it. But guess what? They went out to take it back, and guess what? God set them up. They came back richer. Oh, you're going to catch this. They, they came out richer. They came out more blessed at the, at the end of this trial. Oh, did it take a little bit of, of work sometimes? But no matter what you're going through, if you just get up from be sore and you be able to travel and go take back, you're going to come out of that trial more blessed. So I decided in my life that I'm going to fold my tent. I'm going to pack those stakes. Uh, you know, and I'm going to save, the, I, I'm, I'm leaving Besor. I don't care what you talk about me. I don't care what you say. I'm not living in Besor. I don't care. I don't, I don't care uh, if the people don't talk, uh, lie about, about us, run our name down. It's okay. I'm not, I'm not. That's okay. You can believe what you want. And look, to be honest, I hope nobody stays at Besor. But, but we're going to leave some people behind because that's what they want. They're happy there. It's quiet at Besor, except for the little bit of whimpering and crying you hear at midnight because everybody's upset. So where you live in your life? Are you, look, and, and with this said, some, of, some people in life get a bad rap. Some things are done to us that we can't control. But what we choose is how we react to situations. What we choose is how I let things hurt me. You know, what I choose, see, I don't choose whether I get a cut or not, but I choose the healing process. Oh, I'm going to say that again. I don't choose a wound, but I choose a healing process. Come on. So, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 don't, I don't choose. You didn't choose your, your accident there, but you do choose how you take care of that wound. You do choose that if you're going to nurture it, if you're going to keep it clean, or, or, or you know what I'm saying? You do choose if you're going to have rehab. You do choose that if you're going to, how this wound's going to be fixed. 
when I broke my foot, about four weeks, I've been having three and a half weeks, four weeks, I had that boot on. Finally, we, we went to Branson, and I said, I ain't wearing this thing anymore. I can't stand it, man. It was hurting. And I just, I said, I'm going to walk it off. Shake it off, Chad. See, I choose how I took care of it. I didn't choose that to break it or not. So what I'm trying to tell you, do you are you choosing to be here at Besor? But you choose what you do today. Come on, we wake up. All those feelings come back. Say, today I choose not to be offended. Today I choose not to be angry. Today I choose to love that co-worker that is getting on my nerves. Today I choose to smile. Today I choose to sing praises unto God. Today I choose to love that old man that snores every night. Today I choose to cook my husband's supper, rub his neck. Today I choose to be good to someone. Today I choose to let those past go. Today I choose, come on, I am leaving, Be somebody say that with me if that's you. I am leaving, be sore. I, I want to say it this way and as I close, be sore is going to be no more in my life. I, I just know, be sore, no more. Guess what? I'm going to serve God. He says, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Turn to your name and say, pack your bags and hit the road. Amen. Amen. It's time as a church that, that, that be sore gets condemned. Remember when they condemn it? Uh, you're being evicted from be sore. So whether you like it or not, I'm kicking you out. God's saying, I'm kicking you out. Guess what? You're not living there anymore. Guess what? It's a danger zone. It's got radiation all over because it it's going to kill you. Oh, that's a revelation right there. Guess what? Be sore will kill you. We're not living in Chernobyl. Somebody said, oh, it's safe to go visit and tour. I'm like, well, you can go because you might grow a third ear. Because <laughs> I don't know what's there. <laughs> Keith's going to come back from Chernobyl and he's going to have a tail. I'll pass. I'll pass. You're going to need a big 34 for your tail. That's a, that's a, that's a mission trip joke. Referring to Joe's pant size. And, you know. <laughs> no, what's going to happen is so we were joking about the pant sizes and Joe's just happens to be bigger than us. I don't want to say it the right way or. It's muscle, guys. It's all muscle, and we know that. But I, I just I just know Sunday morning, because Joe said it was, it was almost at 33. He's going to be in some skinny pants. So if Joe comes like this and singing, I'm in a size 30. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So anyway, so, but, but be sore is evicted. Be sore, be, for, be sore is not a place to live. Be sore might be a place where we stop and pause. But when the Holy Ghost comes in and says, hey, I didn't call you to this place. You realize that the Israelites was not called to the wilderness. They were called to the promised land. But let me tell you, this is, this is exciting. And, and, and I'm going to end with this. In the wilderness, he fed them anyway. In the wilderness, a place that you wasn't supposed to be, but you were there. In the wilderness, he, miracles happened. In the wilderness, they had children. In the wilderness, God prepared them to do the work. So you might be at be sore, but guess what? It's time to pack up. Amen. And let us go on to victory. Amen. That was the two choices, be sore or victory. What is your choice tonight? It's your choice. You don't choose the offense, but you choose the way it's healed. I say this all the time, and I'll end with this. An offense is an event. Jesus said, offenses will come. It's guaranteed. Somebody's going to offend us, do us wrong, lie about us, go down. But Jesus said this. Uh, he said, offenses will come. So Jesus already told us. He warned us. But an offense is an event. To be offended is a choice. I choose not to be offended. <clears throat> I choose to love you anyway. I choose to believe God is going to do all good things through what he's done. I believe God can take a bad situation like we just read and turn it into something beautiful. 
The Bible says he gives us beauty for ashes. How many has got some ashes that you're waiting for God to bring beauty to? Let's bow our heads. Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, that, that, that you put in an, so an eviction notice on the devil, Lord. Lord, we are leaving be sore, Lord, and we're going on to victory, Lord. Lord, I'm not, I'm not going to let the world and life hold us down. Lord, I believe that you're releasing the hurts and the pains and the fears of the past, Lord. And, Lord, we're going on to the future, Lord. Lord, I believe you got a bright future, Lord. No matter what we've done in the past, Lord, the blood has covered it. Lord, the blood has been applied to my past. The Lord, the blood has been applied to, to, to all those things I've done wrong. And Lord, I'm walking into the future, Lord. I'm walking into a place of victory, Lord, a place of blessings. Lord, I'm walking into a change, Lord. I'm walking into a life and life more abundantly. Lord, we give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' holy name. And the church said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, be sore no more. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you have anything to give tithes and offerings, uh, we do have the bucket uh, tonight. If you have anything to give, the Lord will bless you. We appreciate it. Uh, a little heads up on uh, the building. I was uh, uh, Just in case some people didn't hear or I didn't tell, we're almost done with the highway department. They sent us their last little changes uh, they want made, and then we'll be approved for the highway department to be able to connect our, our driveway to it. Uh, we got We got approval for the private road that the parish is calling it and preliminary approval to build our parking lot which means as soon as you just want you to pour the concrete for the road first and then you can pour the concrete second for there just whatever uh it doesn't make sense to me but that's the way our parish ordinances read uh we are waiting back for the final approval from the state fire marshal uh we should have gotten the final approval back from the uh, health unit for our septic uh and then it's just uh, it's just a matter of going to the bank He's waiting for all our information, and, and guess what? I believe God's going to begin to go uh, and, and do things, uh, uh, you know. And, you know, when we, we, we got an estimate for our metal in October, and come March, it's done went up $50,000. And when he told me that, I said, oh, well, it's God's church. He got to build it. <clears throat> God knew when, what the prices were going to be. He's not, I don't know, he's just got it planned out. I'm just going to use the money I got and be faithful. Uh, if you bought a two by four lately, a five dollar two by four is fourteen dollars now. But guess what? We're just gonna do it anyway. I, you know, guess what? We're just gonna build it, and God's gonna make a way. So, and, I, and I'm gonna believe that. So, I want to thank you for all your giving. If you didn't hear uh, the garage sale on Friday and Saturday, uh, we we were able to raise thirteen hundred, uh, th oh, thirty three, whatever that sign, <laughs> whatever the screen said. Uh, and uh, we were going to have it. We have a lot of stuff left. We were going to have it Saturday, but there's 70% there's rain, so it'll probably be the following Saturday, or we might just hold it to the first of the month. Uh, I went upstairs because uh, there, was, there was a leak from the air condition right on my dad's chair. So I... I <laughs> I almost wanted to leave it and just when it would fall on his head, like it rains on the just and the unjust, <clears throat> and, you know, but, but I, I went in and I, and I put a bucket there uh, and I'm not sure w why the, it was doing that. But anyway, so, uh, you know, we want to, uh, uh, you know, just so, so I did see what I was wanting to sidetrack. The attic's full of garage sale stuff. I totally forgot about. So we'll have some new stuff there. Uh, remember, tomorrow night will be the second night of the seed, the sword, and the soldier. Uh, has any, who, 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 who made the first night? Raise your hand. How many enjoyed it? Is it worth, you know, it was, is it worth it? Amen. So, uh, and the ones that watch online, uh, you know, so that it, it's, uh, I think it's, it's, it, this is called deep discipleship. We're going deeper. Uh, this is for uh, intermediate to advanced Christians. Uh, we, we will be having probably a, a discipleship class again. And, and that'll be for the new believers. You need to know why you believe what you believe in.